My name is Philip Waliaro. I'm so grateful for this chance that God has given to me, even to give my salvation testimony. But first, before I testify, I'd like to read from the book of 1 Peter, chapter 1, verse 16. It says, Because it is written, Be you holy, for I am holy. I'm one person that was born in Catholic Church. I used to be very religious. Uh, when I <coughs> came through this scripture, I really want, wanted to be very holy as God is holy. I wanted to live like God being holy. So this question really used to disturb me. I could ask myself, how can I be holy like God? So many a times I could engage in deeds and activities that could make me holy. I could fast, I could pray, attend church. I'm not saying fasting or attending church is bad, but I really wanted to be as holy as God. Many a times, even though I wanted to live a holy life, but I found myself every time falling short of the glory of God. So I could go to different denominations and churches asking pastors, what can I do to be holy? Many a times I could find myself going to the mountain, going for fast in various places so that I can attain the holiness of God. I lived trying so many activities so that I can be very holy. Even though sometimes I could fault somebody, but many a times I could find myself trying to do good, trying to please people. So I was wondering, what can I do to be holy? Even though I could go to the mountain to fast, but every time from the mountain, I could still find myself being controlled by the desires and the lust of the flesh. Until now it reached a point I was even giving up. So I said, at this point of time, let me try to speak in tongues. Maybe if I speak in tongues, I'll be as holy as God. Because most of the time as I was standing fellowship with people from different religions, they could tell me that if I speak in tongues, at that point, God will be speaking in me. So I really tried to see myself, how can I speak in tongues? When I was trying to speak in tongues, a time came when I went to a mission and I tried to speak in tongues, but to no avail. Then I went to another evangelistic mission and the pastor prayed for us, but still it was in vain that I could not even speak in tongues. Then a time came when I was trying to pray, it came automatically, my mouth started wagging. At that point I felt, ah, maybe this is how, what it means to speak in tongues. But I got bored because I could not understand what I was speaking. So what I did, I get bothered with the speaking, and then I left it. So I was wondering, even though what they're saying that this is speaking in tongues, but still I'm not standing right with God. In my heart, I could not feel that I am holy as God is holy. So I reverted again to fasting. I could fast for seven days. I could fast for 14 days. But still, this was nothing. I could still find myself being controlled by the desires of the flesh. So these questions kept disturbing me. How can I be as holy as God? So one time, a friend of mine took me to church. I met church Good News Mission, and I was introduced to a pastor, Wycliffe Madani. So when I met this pastor, this pastor asked me, Philip, are you born again? I said, yes, I'm a born again sinner. And then he laughed at me. He was asking, how can you be born again and yet you still you still a sinner. But I said, yeah, pastor, I am a born again by grace, but I am st there is no one who does not sin. So I could see myself as still a sinner, but yet born again. But what could surprise me? How comes this pastor was still laughing at me? He could ask me, how comes you are saying you are a born again, but you still you still a sinner? So to me, when I, I could contemplate or think about it, for sure, it was a contradictory statement. I could ask myself, how comes I'm a sinner and I'm a born again? And then he could ask me, what is the difference between you who is going to church, you are still a, sin a sinner, and somebody else who does not go to church, and yet they are still sinners? So this, thing, this question for sure, it disturbed me. I could not understand how the person who does not go to church is still a sinner, and me who, who says that I'm going to church, I'm a sinner. Then he told me, the problem is the foundation of my spiritual life. So then he took me to Hebrews chapter 10, verse 10. We can read Hebrews chapter 10, verse 10. It says, By the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ 
once and for all. So he was telling me, by the offering of the body of Jesus Christ, I've already been made holy. If Jesus Christ was offered on the cross for my sins, there is no way that I can say I still have sins. But if I'm still saying that I'm, I'm a sinner, it means I'm despising the, the work of Jesus Christ on the cross. If I'm despising the work of Jesus Christ on the cross, that's why I'm still a sinner. But if I really believe in the word of God, which says that on the cross, Jesus Christ has already taken away all my sins. He said that it is finished. Then it means I no longer have any sin. But if I'm still saying that I'm a sinner, it means I do not believe in the work of Jesus Christ on the cross. At that point, I realized ah, that for sure, if he took away my sins, there is no way that I can still have my sins. So being led by religion and other denominations saying that I'm a sinner, it means that I'm the one who is despising the work of Jesus Christ on the cross. I'm the one who is not believing in the work of Jesus Christ on the cross. If Jesus Christ took away my sins, then I'm the one who has been made holy, perfect, and righteous. So I'm so grateful that through this friend I was brought to church and I learned the true word of Jesus Christ which says that my sins have been washed as white as snow. I am perfect, I am holy, and I am, I am righteous. Even though I'm, I'm, I make mistakes, I have weaknesses and lackings, but I should not look upon myself, but I should look upon the cross. I should look upon the completed work of Jesus Christ, and this work is the one that makes me to be holy. So my spiritual life is to live looking upon the word and not to live looking upon myself. When I look upon myself, I'm the one who is weak, I'm the one who is only lacking and evil. But when I look upon the finished work of the cross, for sure I can say that Christ made me holy, Christ made me righteous, and Christ made me perfect. And this Christ who saved me, he put me in the church so that I can continually be guided by the servant of God and to have fellowship with other brethren. So I'm so grateful to God who saved me and put me in the church so that continually I can be guided as I realize my true image. I'll, I'll testify up to there. Thank you.